Hello everyone. In the previous session, we discussed the direct write-off method for handling past due accounts receivable. We mentioned at the end of the lecture that the direct write-off method is not generally accepted accounting principles method. It's not a gap method. In this session, we will introduce the allowance method, which is a gap method for handling bad debt or past due account or accounts receivable. So what is the allowance method? Just like the direct write-off method, it's a way of handling past due bad debt expense. It's a way to manage unpaid receivables. We will explain why the allowance method complies with GAAP. Why is it generally accepted accounting principle method? And we'll walk through a series of computation and journal entries showing you how the allowance method works. At the end, we'll work capable choice questions. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Our financial accounting course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their financial accounting courses. We cover all the essentials from debits and credits, adjusting entries, closing entries, financial statements, and all balance sheet accounts. Our comprehensive course include lectures, multiple choice, true false, as well as practical exercises. Start your free trial today to help you pass your financial accounting course. Your success starts here. I will start by discussing two advantages of the allowance method and explaining why the allowance method is a gap method. But before I do that, I want to show you this picture and I want to make a point. The point is this. This is a mother and this is her child. And the mother is giving money to her child. She's giving an allowance for this child to spend the money. So let's assume this allowance is a dollar. Now, as far as the mother is concerned, her expense takes place when she hand this dollar to her child. Now, this child will go to the store and they will buy, I don't know, chewing gum or maybe chocolate or a soda, whatever. When they spend this money, when they spend it, it's not an expense for the mother, not an expense. Why? Because the expense took place when she hand the money to the child. So this is what the allowance method did. And you, you're going to see the allowance method allows the company to recognize the expense when the mother gives the dollar to the child. In other words, the expense is recognized way earlier than it takes, than it actually takes place. Just keep that in mind as we go over the session. Now, let's go back to the two advantages of the allowance method. One is it aligned bad debt expense with the period in which the related sale occurred. So it satisfies the matching principle, matching revenues with, with expenses. And why is this important? Because of the prior session. In the prior session, we spoke about the direct write-off method. And this was one of the disadvantages of the direct write-off method. The allowance method will solve this problem and will make this method a gap method. The other, the other issue that the allowance method tells us is it gives you what we call the net realizable value of the receivable. And what is the net realizable value? Basically, we're going to show account receivable minus the allowance. So let's assume the company will have a million of receivable of which 50,000 is not collectible. Then the company would show NRV, net realizable value, 950. It means it report the receivable at the cash is expected to be collected, which is good. So it doesn't overstate receivable. It shows you, you do have a million dollar of receivable. However, of that million dollar, 950 is only collectible. So those are the advantages why the allowance method is a, you guessed it, a gap method, the acceptable method. Now, how does it actually work to adhere with gap? What do we have to do? This method, there we go, estimates incollectible at the end of each period. So at the end of each period, we will estimate how much we are not going to collect. And notice, we're going to estimate bad debt. So at the end of each accounting period, companies estimate total amount of bad debt to match it with expenses related to that revenue this period. And they make the following entry, debit, bad debt expense, credit allowance for doubtful account. For short, I'm going to call it allowance for bad 
debt. So whether we said doubtful accounts or bad debt, it's the same thing. Your textbook might say it doubtful account it might say bad debt sometimes I'm just gonna call it allowance it does not really matter so it's an allowance account for account receivable hold on a second what type of account is the allowance account this is a new account this is a contra receivable and you're gonna see how it's presented on the balance sheet it's a contra receivable actually I just showed you without mentioning mentioning this now bear in mind in the real world here's what happened in the real world in the real world you don't have to wait Till the end of the accounting period you can estimate bad debt as they think they are occurring so let's assume for one reason or another you find out that the economy is going south in other words uh, businesses are suffering we have a recession well you don't have to wait till the end of the period you recognize your expenses as soon as you know that they that they exist so bad debt expense, if you find out less and less customers are paying their bills, you just increase your bad debt expense and you increase your allowance. Then at some point when the customer don't pay, when the customer don't pay their balance, what do you do? You are going to write off an account. What is writing off an account? Writing off an account is when you take the account receivable, this is the AR, and you throw it in the garbage bin. So we're going to see that later. So when a specific account is determined to be incollectible, so let's assume here for the sake of illustration, we estimated $5,000 to be incollectible. Let's, let's assume we estimated 5000 And one customer with a balance of 2000 was determined to be incollectible. Now we identified the customer. We debit allowance for 2000 and we credit the receivable for that customer for 2000 and writing off an account means crediting the account receivable putting the account receivable in the garbage and getting rid of it and you're gonna see an example a complete example but you need to know what writing off an account writing off is basically getting rid of the account receivable it means you are recording an expense hold on a second I did not debit an expense here no, because I already debited the expense here when I estimated my allowance. So the expense takes place before the account receivable is written off. Now, remember I told you that the this method gives you the net realizable value. So let's assume a company, for the sake of illustration, has 40000 in account receivable and they have 2000 in allowance. Allowance is a contra receivable. So the way they present this information is 40 minus 2 equal to 38,000. So what is the 38,000? The company is understating the receivable. They're not really understating. They're giving the account receivable proper amount, which is 38. Why is it the proper amount? Because that's the amount expected to be collected. Now, another way to present this, some companies, what they do, they, it's one line, account receivable, net of allowance, 38,000. Now, in the notes of the financial statements they have more details about this so this presentation helps users assess the actual cash expected to be collected now bear in mind now bear in mind here's what I want you to see bear in mind that under the allowance method writing off an account does not affect the net realizable value how so let me show you let's assume later during the year we identified a balance with five hundred dollars to be incollectible what do we do to write off an account look look at what we do we debit the allowance 500 it means we reduce the allowance 500 and we reduce the receivable 500 let's do that so here we're gonna reduce the receivable by 500 and that's gonna give us how much of receivable 39,500 we're gonna reduce the allowance for 500 it's gonna be 1,500 notice after we write off an account the net realizable value is the same why because you are reducing the receivable and you are reducing the allowance at the same time so you are reducing the asset and the opposite of this asset so that's 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 very important to remember now let's take a look at a more comprehensive example for the allowance before we dive into more details fresh market a company specializing in organic produce has credit sales of 400,000 at the end of the first year they have 35,000 of these sales remain incollectible what does that mean it means their account receivable is 25,000 it means they have not collected this money based on industry analysis and their own standard they estimate that 2,000 of the account receivable 
will be incollectible. Remember, we have 25,000 and they estimate 2,000 to be incollectible. 2,000 to be incollectible. We're estimating what entry do we make? And they're doing this at the end of the year. They will debit bad debt expense. So notice they are recognizing an expense. They are recognizing an expense before it actually happens. So we debit an expense. What do we credit? We credit allowance for 2000. Remember, allowance is a contra asset. And because it's a contra asset, it has a normal credit balance. How would things are shown on the balance sheet? Well, here's on the balance sheet, which still show the account receivable at 25, less the allowance equal to 23,000 net realizable value. Now let's write off an account. Suppose Fresh Market determined that Farhat's $500 account is incollectible. So I purchased from them and I'm, I did not pay my bill. They called me, they called me, they tried. Then they determined I am going bankrupt don't believe it but yes for the sake of this example <laughs> so what entry would fresh market makes they will debit the allowance remember in the allowance they had 2000 estimated they will debit the allowance and they will credit my account so notice they had 2000 in the allowance now they reduced it by 500 they still have in the allowance 1500 and they credit my account and when they credit my account what would happen to my balance my balance will be my balance with them will be zero now they will never tell me they did this they'll keep they're gonna keep they're gonna keep contacting me but as far as their accounting they wrote off the account sometimes they sell it and the collection agency will contact you now here's what we need to know we had a credit balance of 1500 in the allowance credit balance now we need to know what does it mean if you have a credit balance. A credit balance and the allowance indicate that the company has overestimated its allowance for bad debt or for doubtful account. If I estimated 2000 and I only wrote off and I only wrote off 500, well, I overestimated because I thought 2000 will be incollectible, the only dead beat was Farhat. Well, that's good. Let's assume we wrote off an account of another client and happens to be more than 1500. Let's assume we wrote off another balance for 2300. Then we'll have a debit balance of 800. What does a debit balance mean? It means we underestimated. We thought it's going to be 2000. It was 500 plus it was 500 plus 2300. We end up writing off and $800 more. It means we incurred more than expected. So you have to understand this very well. What does it mean to have a credit balance in the allowance? What does it mean to have a debit balance in the allowance? Now, why is this important? It's very important. You're going to see why shortly, very shortly. Now, uh, well, we said, you know, we made an estimate, but how do we technically make this estimate? There are two primary methods for making the, this estimate under the allowance method. We could use the percentage of sales, so that's one method. That's the first method, or we could use the account receivable method. Now, under the account receivable method, we could use percentage of receivable or aging of receivable. We're going to see both. Now, the percentage of sales is simple one-step method. You're going to see that. I just want to, I'm just um, kind of preparing the ground for you. The account receivable method is two steps. It's two steps. You're going to see what I mean by two steps. There's two ways, but there's two steps in this process. So let's start with the allowance method using the sales method. Techmart had 300 in credit sales and estimate 0.8% will be incollectible. We'll take the amount times 0.8%, which is 0.008. It will give us 2,400, very simple. We debit that, that expense, credit allowance. That's it, one step. Debit, bad debt, credit allowance. Very, very simple. Now, let's look at the percentage of receivable and aging receivable. We're gonna work each example of, uh, each, example of each, but let's look at the two steps. This two-step method calculate the required allowance balance. I call this the target based on the percentage of receivable or based on the aging schedule. We're going to see what we mean by that. So first, 
compute the target balance step one steps this is step one we're gonna take the account receivable times an estimated percentage and this will give us this will give us the target balance then we compare the current allowance balance to the target balance and adjust accordingly don't worry we'll work an example illustrating this concept so step one you know, step one we find out what the ending balance, the target balance should be. So step one is taking the account receivable times a percentage. Then after we figure out the target balance, we work backward. We compare the current allowance to the target. So we might have a debit balance, we might have a credit balance and the allowance and we'll work backward. Don't worry, we'll work in example. Let's look at green grocer a company that sells organic and local produce and they have 60,000 in account receivable at the end of the year in addition to that they have $300 in the allowance account so $300 in the allowance account based on their historical data and industry trend they estimate that 4% of receivable will be incollectible let's go through step one what's a step one Give me the target and the balance account. 60,000 times 4% equal to 2,400. This is my target balance. I need to have a balance. I need to have a balance, a balance of 2,400. Okay, good. Now, if I have already 300, what's going to take me from 300 to 2,400? Hold on a second. What does 300 mean? 300 credit balance? It means from the prior period, I overestimated my allowance by 300. Therefore, what am I looking for? I'm looking for a $2,100 adjustment. Therefore, I debit, bad debt expense. I credit allowance. So this is the entry. Debit, bad debt expense. Credit the allowance. And I am good to go. Aging of receivable method. This is another receivable method, but it's the aging of receivable. How does it work? Well, each group of the receivable is assigned a specific percentage for estimating bad debt, which reflect the likelihood of non-payments. What we do is we break down the receivable into different groups. Based on what? Based on their aging. What's aging? 30 days late, 60 days late, 90 days late, over 90 days late. This is how we group them. Then for each group, we project a percentage. So the estimated bad debt for each group are computed by multiplying the receivable in that group by a corresponding percentage. So what we're doing here, we're not taking the whole receivable, we're not taking the whole receivable times a percentage. What we're doing is we're taking the receivable, breaking it into separate group, group one, group two, group three, group four, then computing a percentage for each group. How do we, de how do we determine each group based on their age how long is that receivable outstanding these calculated amount are then summed totaled to determine the total so let's take a look at an example so we have total receivable of 40,400 composed of Sarah Johnson 4,500 Alex White Taylor these are the customers we have one two three four five six customers okay Sarah Johnson, the account for her, uh, the balance for her account is not yet due. Alex White, 30 days past due. Let's take a look at Taylor Enterprises, 7,800, 7,300 not yet due, 500 is 1 to 30 days. Creative, 3,500, 2,500 not yet past due, 500, 1 to 30 days, and 531 to 60 days. So you get, you get the point where we break each group separately. So not yet due, 27, not 900, 1 to 30 days, 2,600, 31 to 60 days, 3,300, and 1,900. Notice the vintage group. The, we should stop selling them anything because they're not paying their bills anyhow then what we do is we add each group separately then we project a percentage for each group and what do you notice you notice that as the group is is getting older the percentage is higher what would that indicate it indicate that the longer it's taken us to collect more likely it's taking to collect the money it's it's very simple then what we do we add them all up and we get to the estimated incollectible. This is the target now. So rather than taking 40,400 multiplied by a percentage, we can do that and find the target. Another way to find this target is taking the amount, uh, breaking it down, 
then taken the amount in each group and project a percentage on it. Now, let's assume for the sake of this example, the target, not the sake, we computed the target happens to be 2743. And we're working with an example where the allowance has a credit balance of 500. So what do we do? We take the target balance minus the credit balance. So if we have a credit balance, we deduct. Therefore, what we need what we need in total, what we need in total, we need to have 2,743. If that's what we need, if that's the target, what are we missing? We are missing how much? 2,243. Therefore, we credit allowance 2,243. We debit that expense 2,243. And that's the entry. Let's change the example. Let's assume for this, uh, well, yeah, let's change the example. Let's assume for the sake of illustration, we have a 650 debit balance to start with. Well, if we have debit balance 27, uh, if we already have a debit balance of 650 and the balance should be 2743, if it's a debit balance, we'll take the target plus the debit balance. So if the allowance is debit, add the target to the allowance. Then... What does that mean? It means we need an adjustment of 33.93. We credit allowance 33.93. We debit bad debt expense 33.93. So be careful. Be careful whether the balance and the allowance is a debit or a credit. Now, if you are not told, let's assume you are giving a problem, whether it's in your course or on the CPA exam or on your CMA exam, and you are not told, they just told you an allowance balance of 650. What would you assume? You would assume it's a credit balance. Why? Because the allowance is a contra asset. Therefore, the normal balance is a credit balance. So be careful. If they told you if it's a debit balance, be careful. You will take the target balance plus the debit to get to your allowance. If it's a credit balance, it means we overestimated. It means we need to book less. So if it's a debit balance, why do we need to book more? Because we need to book enough to eliminate the debit. The debit is the underestimate of last year. So last year we underestimated. We're going to make it up this year. Let's take a look at this multiple choice question to see how we adjust for this. Tech word estimate that 3% of receivable will be incollectible. They currently have a balance of 1,200 in the allowance for doubtful account. Hold on a second. 1,200 credit balance. Let's draw a T account and interpret this balance. So this is, let's see, this is the allowance account. And we have a balance, credit balance of 1,200. And we need a target of how much? Well, if it's 100,000 times 3%, that's easy. We need a target balance of 3,000. If we need a target balance of 3,000, how much are we missing? If we need a target balance of 3,000, it means we are missing here. We are missing the adjusting entry of 1,800. 1,800, it means we have to debit bad debt expense, 1,800 credit allowance 1800 and the answer would be B as in boy what should you do now you want to go to Farhat lectures look at additional MCQs additional resources that's going to do what help you pass your course your CPA exam your CMA exam invest in yourself accounting is worth it good luck and of course stay safe